Blue World? Yeah. I'm blue, double, do, double, die? Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Oh, the apple. Uh, a blue man, and he's going down blue stairs, and he gets in a blue Kia, and then he drives on a blue highway. Uh, uh, David Guetta and what's her name did a cover of that song, and now yeah. it's called Blue I'm Good. Or no, I'm Good, yeah. parentheses blue. Oh, it's like a massive song. Yeah. Yeah. It's back. We're back. This is, no, we were listening to uh, Guesses by Foxella and Andrew A. and Barmuda. You know, I always wonder what happened to those two. Yeah. There they go. God bless them. R.I.P. Speaking of God bless them, uh, Andrew, can you hear us? Share me the opal because I only hear Justin. Yes, I shall. Hello, everybody. We're going to do new weird things. We got marbles later this evening, by the way. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you join us. That'll be a lot of fun. Nice. Have you considered setting up an illegal gambling racket around marbles? I'm, I'm, I'm still working out the Javas and the databases on that stuff, but... But, uh, yes. I mean, it seems like that'd be a good way to generate press. Yeah. Well, I want to. I, w- I do want to have an option where people through the Patreon can just give themselves points. Like, give themselves fake points, but, like, good points. So, like, there's, like, oh. there's like how, how? points, and then there's, like, true points, real points. Okay. Vera point. I wonder how many hoops, regulatory speaking, you'd have to go through to set yourself up as a legitimate exchange just for the purpose of people putting in money to pretend to gamble on marbles, but also it would kind of be actual gambling, but mainly, no. Hmm. It, do you think there's room for a marbles-based crypto? Uh, I mean, I think there's room for all the cryptos you could want. Technically, rock, rock dollars. Inf- infinite. Uh, I'm sorry, Andrew. I don't see any reason why the Opal line is not open. My fault. It's it's my fault. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh. I, I clicked on Justin's. Ah! Uh, that'll do it. Okay, we'll make sure we meet that. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi, Andrew. We we are live on the we are live on the internet at the moment, and you can Good. be heard. I've, 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 I've got w- some things to say to the internet. Well, welcome to Privileged Talk, where we only say things we're not supposed to talk about. <laughs> project Alpha. AKA what a project that was. Get me fired. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. We'll get started with the Weird Things program in a few moments. Uh. How's it going? It's a Friday, TGI Friday. It is unbelievably yeah. gorgeous here in Austin today. Like perfect. Uh, I, I think we're around 60 degrees outside. Not a cloud in the sky. No wind. It's awesome. Dude. Yeah, it, it was it was a nice uh, 78. And then a uh, light rain started here in uh, in, in Sunrise, Florida. Hmm. Now, does the sun also set there, or do they, does they only do rises? Well, I mean, I mean, also, no, nope, no uh, wonder it, it, the it, rain it, is so light if the sun's shining on it. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it 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 goes both ways. Mm. It, the sun rises and the sun sets and sunrise. And the Panthers play. It is where the Florida Panthers are located. Oh. They should put them in a zoo. <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be a weird place to play hockey. 
Well, I agree. I also agree with that. Oh my god, how much would you pay for chimpanzee <laughs> hockey? <laughs> What about what about no? What about Panthers? Panthers on the ice. Yeah, that's all we need is a sport to make chimpanzees even more aggressive <laughs> and give them weapons, bladed shoes, and sticks. We're describing yeah. monkey fights on ice. Yeah. Uh, my favorite story, favorite thing I ever saw in Panther Arena. I probably shared the story before, but I'll share it again. Was I saw the Dalai Lama speak there, oh, wow. and it is every it's filled. People go see the Dalai Lama. It gets up and does his talk. And the Q&A question starts, and do you ever see a moment where people, mass psychology, somebody says, what's one of your favorite hobbies? And he says, I like pigeons. I have doves. I have doves. I love these doves. I love these doves. And then I have a rifle I use to shoot at the hawks when they go towards my doves. So I shoot at the hawks to protect them. That's a great bit. <laughs> and I guarantee you, the pe- kind of people show up and hear the Dalai Lama speak, not one of them will remember that story. They just that they no. wipe that the moment. He's joking. It's a key joke. It's just, no, no. This dude, this dude likes shooting at other birds. Yeah, I love the idea of him like. Uh, tricking everybody into like, uh, I, I heard it as the pink golf ball joke. You know, one of those jokes where you just keep on going and if you pull it off right, you've gone 45 minutes and then the end is, and then he died and you get no resolution to the why of the thing. Like, like mm. that would be a great 45 minute speech from the Dalai Lama where it's like, uh, uh, when I was seven, <laughs> somebody once told me the mystery of the pink golf balls. No, I like my favorite version that actually has sort of an ending was the whole the Norm Macdonald about the moth that goes to see the therapist. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. Uh, oh, oh, you haven't? Good. Oh, it's yeah, it's classic. But he got he got spread around a lot after he died. But uh, yeah, it's a Conan O'Brien thing, and apparently, it was on accident that they had done. They were like set to do two segments with Norm Macdonald something else fell through that day. And so they had to do three segments and they were like, all right, do you have something that you can do? And Norm was like, yeah, I got something. And it was this, <laughs> this joke. Uh, it was, and, and it's, it's amazing. It is like, it is a joke. He apparently heard from Colin Quinn. That's a, it's a pretty like, you know, borscht belty kind of joke, but he tells it in a Norm Macdonald fashion. But, that is but it's one of those uh, uh, shaggy dog story leading you astray forever and ever and ever. It's no, it's not that that it buttons up and it, you feel that way. And it buttons up in a beautiful way that just you yeah, never want to tell it, a shaggy it, it, dog story again. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's imagine a super tight vaudeville, like take my wife, please kind of joke. Right. And then, put a shaggy dog, a Norm Macdonald shaggy dog meandering like way to get to from A to B. And that's, that's basically what it is, but it's, it's, it, you lose yourself in his meandering. to the point where you think he's just like going on and on. All right. Okay. You guys ready? Let's do some weird things. Let's go. Yeah. All right, Andrew, I'll catch you in for the weird things program in Three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. The atomic nucleus that is this podcast, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, nucleus mode activated. (laughs) Beginning rotation. Reason, vision, cannot decide. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so uh, it's becoming challenging to, to find stories involving weird stuff that don't involve anything I directly work with, but I have a cool one for you. <laughs> can, can, can we take a moment to celebrate that that was a true statement that you just said? That's pretty great. Yeah, it yeah. It, it, the, the, the challenge of my job is that it's as you know, I work for OpenAI. I'm the science communicator. I mean, that's my second job. My primary job is here as your host for Weird Things mm-hmm. among the other hosts. Um, and I do, I'm on the comms team, the communications team, which means that, you know, I, I get a comment less on the stories being made outside. I don't want to comment outside of like official means or whatever. And so that mm-hmm. means that I'm much more muted Andrew Maine about stuff because of that. And yeah. so... 
it's 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 a, it's it's great to be up close. It's the other part is that I normally have opinions about things and then I don't really want to share them yeah. lest they be misconstrued as. Uh, the know, good news official, is that there's official doctrine. There there's no yeah. shortage of things that are weird though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah, yeah, and part of it's hard too because you get like somebody says something or whatever, and you're like, wow, I could point out this one very obvious thing that would probably pop that balloon. But that's not my role. Uh, we're, we're not allowed to pop the balloons, Andrew. I don't know if you saw some of the other no, things out there. Unless we're not we're like to spend four hundred thousand dollars on a Stinger missile, which we don't have at the moment. No. Yeah, Patreon.com. Patreon. Do you do you know my balloon adventure? I told you. Did I tell you my balloon story on here well, before? I, I, I know one of your balloon adventures, and I believe it was uh, somehow involved with your television show on A and E. There, I had completely forgot about that one. That was the second time that involved magic in a balloon, um, which I was telling this other story, and I completely forgot that. But uh, for A and E, I did a thing where I put a guy's motorcycle inside of a balloon, and then we let it float in the air and shot it with a crossbow, and it blew up. I remember um, that. That was good. That, good, that guy was mad. Hydrogen, hydrogen. Among the most yeah. normal sentences ever spoken yeah. on this program. He didn't like that at all. And 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 you watch it, and it's 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 not choppy TV style, but I assure you, he had no idea what was going on, <laughs> and he was very very frustrated and very confused because he sees his balloon, his motorcycle floating inside of a balloon, and then it blows up. <laughs> it blows up. We had we was filled with hydrogen too, which is awesome. Awesome. And we, it was just, so I got good. it. I have a kids get into TV because they let you do things like build stormtrooper armor to play with sharks or like play with crossbows and stuff and all that. Uh, you know, What's Brian's made like a weekly show of it. So, <laughs> so okay. I was. It's now, tough for us. We just had an irresponsible video go out. <laughs> so my first years ago. James Randi, who we all we all know, uh, when he was approached by Nova to do a documentary, uh, they were doing a show called Nova Secret of the Psychics, which is really to this day still, I think one of the best you know coverages of the psychics and whatnot and Randy's work in that world. They were looking at different segments to do, and Randy asked me and my buddy Ken Montgomery if we had an idea, and I said we could do one of UFOs. What if we fake a UFO? So he went to Nova, and he got a budget for this. And he got a budget for me and Ken to fake a UFO. Now we're like 19. And so, you know, we're not, you know, we come up with the best thing our 19 year old brains can consider. So what we do is we get a giant, like one of these big giant, like six foot white balloons in a helium tank. And then a bunch of light sticks that you snap and put them inside the, you know, they glow. So we took the balloon, filled it up and then put the light sticks inside of there and then tied it to a fishing line that was attached to a fishing pole. We wanted kind of a clear staging ground, so we went over to the our middle school nearest was a Seminole Middle School, and we go to the baseball field there at night, and we let the balloon out on the line. And it's a Florida night where it means kind of a low cloud cover, like just thick cloud cover. And the balloon goes up, and it hovers just below the clouds. And because of the light sticks rolling inside of it, it was a calm, windy, calm night. The balloon's just bobbing gently, and you hear this. <laughs> Oh, oh, as they roll holy. around oh, wow. it was a very eerie thing now this is the 90s early 90s so we're curious as anybody notices so we leave the fishing pole there with a the line going up there and we get into a car and we start driving around neighborhoods and we see people outside we see people like looking up it was kind of a test to see if this thing was going to work you know because it'd be a cool thing to then come back and get a camera crew to sort of see but we wanted to see if people were looking up and they were and people were you know curious and seeing oh, what is that they weren't like fearful it was just like what the hell yeah. is that kind of approach right and then, you know, we go up to a pay phone and, you know, we, we go to a movie theater nearby where we worked, uh, my Ken had worked and we go there and we can see it there and we call on a pay phone. Hey, have you heard about to a radio station? Hey, have you heard about this weird thing floating over plantation? Like, oh, that's, and we heard these. Are, yeah, somebody else called in about that. And we're like, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we go back to the baseball field or watching this. I'm like, this is pretty cool. I'm like we could see like pulling this sort of stunt off maybe in scale. And then Ken... Ken looks and he sees something in the distance and he taps me. We turn and there was a moment, there was a moment of a few seconds of like a close encounters moment because we see a bright light coming towards us, right? And we're like, have we made contact? Did, and then we were like, have yeah. the mysterious alien like sound of yes, it did. And we're like, oh, shoot. 
and there's a spotlight going through. We're like, this is like the Broward Sheriff's Office helicopter coming in, right? And then we're like, what do we do? We're in this middle of this baseball field, and we got a fishing pole with a fishing line going to this thing. And then like, I'm like, got the, got it, got it, got it. So we're like trying to snap the fishing line. We snap the fishing line, and you see the balloon go, and then the helicopter comes in, right as the balloon drifted up into the clouds. And so, we go run and we hide in the dugout and we're afraid that like police are going to show up or something's going to yeah. happen because of this. Oh my so. gosh. They definitely, well, in the nineties, I don't know about like zoom lenses. Nowadays, if you did that, they would definitely could have tracked you and would have made it on the news. I don't know that they, 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 there's a thing in the sky and there is lots of area, Bryce. So before you try to incriminate me and give them a case <laughs> by which to yeah. prosecute, uh, oh. It was, and, and I, I was saying this yesterday, I was telling some friends, I said, yeah, I said, maybe realize that, like, had I been one person by myself, I would be a lone nut job. But when a friend's involved, then it's a prank. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's one of the things that we brought up in, in the context of crop circles in this Scam Sasquatch and the Supernatural lecture. We were visiting questions like, uh, uh, why on earth would somebody go out of their way to do a crop circle and then not admit it was them. Uh, can anybody think of a reason? Mm. Because well, it's there, a literal crime oh. to, yeah, to yeah, ruin exactly. somebody. Oh, <laughs> In- oh <laughs> interesting. Is that new? Is that a new one? I don't remember that one. But there's also another factor, too, is I may or may not have participated in hijinks, as we call them, that have still <laughs> talked about and people know of that I will never tell anybody i was involved in because it's so much fun to have people go you know what we, we and we never knew and you can sometimes be in a room and hear it told and go yeah <laughs> we'll never know uh there was for years remember justin the bathroom bandits uh the bathroom yeah, bandits those no, are the people ahead. that kept stealing all those bathrooms i got your toilet puck. no <laughs> the opposite it was some groups we don't know who it was they were dropping off like it tore. They drop every year. They drop off a porta potty at the city hall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was for years. So like, uh, um, what was I think the the outhouse bandits? Maybe that's what they call because they would take like a porta potty and it would show up out there. And I have theories on who may actually been behind this, but it was like for eighteen years the outhouse bandits just uh, once a year they would just drop the off outhouse a, gang. Uh, they'd drop off a a toy a, a porta john at at city hall. Yeah, it was outhouse gang. It was every Halloween if you look up the outhouse oh. gang, I went through bathroom boundaries to outhouse gang, but close. Uh, you can see the outhouse gang, and and it was something for like over a decade. Whenever there's trouble, we're there on the double. We're the outhouse gang. For the eighty second, no, it's gone on for eighty two years. Eighty two wow. years. Oh, Jesus. Outhouse gang. Every year since nineteen fifty six in Halloween. Wow, that's uh, that's dedication to the craft. That's commitment to the bit. That's commitment to the bit. Yeah, uh, technically, it's dedication to the crap. <laughs> I I have a theory. <laughs> that was I want to hear your theories. That was really about why they do it? Well, who, and who and oh, why? And, I mean, who? Well, I mean, the immediate <laughs> guess is like, oh, we're going to flush out the city hall. Flush well, out. Me, well, okay, let me get this right. I got. Let me get my facts right here. Hollandale, Florida. For the 36th year, police have issued an alert for the city's notorious outhouse gang. As they have every year since 1956, the gang deposited an outhouse on the steps of the Hollandale Post Office under the cover of Halloween Darkness. Halloween darkness, a special darkness, by the way. <laughs> this time it had a new twist. The custom one-story high John was painted and shaped to look like the White House and included three styles labeled for each of the three presidential candidates. George Bush, Bill Clinton, and Ross Perot. <laughs> they struck again, police spokeswoman Marcia Sandler sighed Monday. It was just another time the Hollandale Police Department got there a little too late. We thought this year they wouldn't do it because of the Breeders' Cup horse race was keeping everybody so busy. But there it was, a three-hole porta potty for Bush, Clinton, and Perot. Sandler said, we thought we had a suspect whose turnout, not the person we're looking for. She said, tongue in cheek, adding that the alert was still out. Dottie Ross, a 26 year old year administrative employee of the police department, said she was mildly surprised when the outhouse was dropped off this year because of the changing population in the city, which is located between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. She said she was afraid the culprits may have moved away. I was kind of surprised. I thought nobody would bother, but doggone, there it was. She said, someone just enjoys continuing the prank. 
This was a big one. It went up to almost the porch type roof of the post office. Did, Ross said she's sure the culprits are not the same people who began the potty prank in 1950s, but maybe relatives. Do, do you think like like inside the police station, this is like Christmas? <laughs> like like will will they come this year? I think I think I think much, much like a, a household waiting for Santa Claus, uh, it might be somebody inside the police department that is making the magic happen. <laughs> I I think so. I think it's much like man. Every graduation, some people come into our high school and they they toilet paper and prank the place. Why why our high school near graduation and why do they mention the seniors? Why does this keep happening to us? Like yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I think I think this is. I don't think that the, the police department would be giving the kind of flowery quotes that they would be doing unless it was something inside that that's like a little inside joke or a rookie thing or something like that. Well, uh, well, and especially a very politically perfectly balanced prank in which all three major candidates are mentioned. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, there's. Like no photos of this. I found one photo photos, yeah. on eBay of someone, uh, but otherwise no one has documented this other than these news articles over the past 40, 50 years. Um, wow. That's a great prank. That's a great prank. That's, a, that's pretty wholesome. It's like you just a little bit of, just a little bit of, just a little bit of nonsense. Do, Let's goof off a do, little bit. do you think that society, uh, 21st century society is is lacking in good high effort well, pranks. Wait, can you? By the way, hold on, Bryce. Describe. Have you looked at the po- the, the the photo? By the way, uh, this fo- not very much. It's it's uh, labeled to Bra- it's labeled Broward 1987 outhouse gang drop off outhouse. Now is look that- at. There's actually a photo of the outhouse gang in the action. Look at this. They're all wearing masks. Yeah. Oh yeah. And this is yeah. apparently the the papal outhouse. There's a truck. There's a whole gang there. Is somebody wearing a luchador mask? They're luchador literally the delivering yeah. the outhouse. Oh, wow. Notice there's a guy's got a pager. He's a cop. A pager? <laughs> He's Papal pooper. These are cops. How did we survive yeah. 58 no, years? No, they're cops. That? Yeah. Oh. No, they're all, they're all, they have what I would describe as cop physique. <laughs> like they are. Yeah, because there's a news crew literally with a guy with a, like a beta cam on his shoulder capturing them in the act, yet... Why are there no police here to stop this? <laughs> exactly. All the cops are at the donut shops. Clark Kent, you're never around when Superman's here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Huh. Uh, uh, what what kind of pranks would you like to see nowadays? That that uh, nowadays the path to prankdom is is much shorter because you would uh, as as Maybe you just steal all the hypothetically, money. Justin and I have done. Uh, just do them online. That's that's easier. What high effort pranks are we missing? Like it used to be, you would bother to dress up as a Sasquatch to fake a Sasquatch eight millimeter movie. Mm-hmm. Well, remember the the people that were putting the 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 steel the 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 steel cylinders or oh, columns. Yeah. That is a good one. Uh, uh, the, uh, the weird cylinder is uh, showing up. Uh, on the map all over the world yeah well i mean but also like like at what point do you cross the line from prank to performance art because i, I would look at that as as classic kind of performance art yeah oh. and and i guess uh, uh tip tip it off my my pick for this week uh, uh you know your your borat style investigations that are actually performed under the guise of a character and so on yeah, I mean, right now yeah. modern pranks are prank videos or prank fake fake They're prank so skits. They're so low effort. It makes me sad. Oh yeah, that's how yeah, much we love them. They have to them. produce on a on a uh, a YouTube scale, right? Like, it, well, that was you know. It, it, it... Yeah, when I brought up the 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 balloon thing, we did the UFO thing, and what somebody there mentioned, like, yeah, that's like that was an outlier thing to do back in the day now that's how you get on youtube like that's the norm is yeah right i guess outside of like making a video that fools people because there's been so much evolution with that between uh deep fakes and every everything else cg and and even filmmaking techniques over the years 
outside of that, it would probably be something very local, right? Something where it would take a while for the message to get out of maybe your city. Or the reverse, very remote. Like uh, uh, one of the, it's not really a prank. I believe it was called an art installation. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of performance art ever, uh, I had the opportunity to experience live as uh, we travel down the West Texas highways at 85 miles an hour. Um, I, I got to see my friend CJ Johnson lose his mind at a Prada store in the middle of the desert. Oh yeah. Um, and it, we've talked about this before. Um, like that, that's, that's about as good as it gets. That's so much effort and no credit to anyone or, or, or misdirected credit to, of an institution who had nothing to do with it. Mm. So you're saying there was no Prada store? Uh, well, <laughs> it, it definitely was not, and uh, they were not open. <laughs> but, but yeah, sure. boy, it was like, 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 as a fan of surrealism, was it surreal to be one hour from anything, uh, either direction, and at 85 miles an hour encounter a Prada store, <laughs> yeah. and then just say, "What just happened?" Yeah, I guess like that sort of experiential thing. And and then like how different is that from like a pop-up, right? Are, are, how different are we describing a pop-up Instagram moment versus uh, you know, a taping of impractical jokers or improv everywhere, you know? Wait, yeah. How do we tread the line between performance and prank? M m maybe the Prada store has a special place in my heart because I can think of absolutely no way that could be monetized and if it was monetized it would be monetized by prada who had nothing to do with it like that seems yeah. like pretty pure art in my book so there i would agree prada gotcha <laughs> where your lights now marfa I can make another Patreon. reference. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you can go to support this show. Patreon.com slash weird things. Keep us loud, live, and independent each and every week. You also get our after things show a little bit earlier. Everybody else, come on in. The water's fine. Patreon.com slash weird things. Come on in. The water's fine. Next story up on the docket and I want to see how you guys feel about this. Is an idea for not enough people travel by rail. You know, we need to have people, more people get into it. Mm. Okay. I'm going to say I, right I, now, I, I, can I say right now, I saved this before the recent events I was and about I really to say, regret this topic. G g g g g sounds like somebody's getting ready to mention a city. No, 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 not. Uh, actually, this was an article I'd saved a while ago. And so mm. much to the, the uh, some of these to the people dealing with the current rail incidents have been happening, which are frustrating. But this was totally chosen. Sure. Algorithmically, sure. way before. Britain had an idea of how to get more people onto trains. And this was the 1949 British Rail had a really good idea. Instead of a buffet car or a restaurant, they created the tavern car, a full pub on wheels with like a mock two door okay. appearance, fake brick walls and outside and even a pub sign on the door. And each pub on each train had names like the white horse salutations, the jolly tar, the dolphin. I mean, look at British okay. rail. Check this out. Well, no, but, uh, is that uncommon i mean they serve alcohol on trains don't they no no take no a, but this is a take theme. a look this at this experience yeah this is there's there's a, a a an experiential quality to this Ooh, wait a minute uh justin just throwing this out there um how much would you like for there to be an epcot train that goes coast to coast and every train car is themed around a different country on the planet I, mean, I think that there is certainly room for a, a kind of a, a full production kind of like awareness on on a train. Really, the the only thing that would make it unfeasible is the fact that you know getting rail access is 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 is, is a pain in the butt. But I would I would be for it in general. I, I'd be for just like a nice ass trip from one place to the other, like if it was on a really cool train and the accommodations were cool. They definitely do go out of their way to make it look. Um, pub 
aestheticized, right? With the, w- yes. the wood paneling, kind of the uh, thatch, the cottage sort of roof on the top and uh, a Bryce, bar. Would, would it be equally accurate to say they go out of their way to make it look like you're not on a train? Yes. <laughs> they make it look like you're in a very, very tiny restaurant. Uh, I guess it would sound like a train, probably. I saw a, 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 a Reddit appears to be like the last public forum that I'm willing to tolerate, um, uh, uh, where you can write complete sentences, uh, however many characters you want. And uh, uh, what one of the things that uh, uh, some debate that I saw was uh, an experienced train traveler saying that trains are pretty much the worst of all worlds. It's uh, all the pains of the ticketing of flights with none of the speed of flights and also more of the congestion uh, or, uh, congestion of traffic uh, that you associate with cars. Um, having said all of that, I don't know. I, I, I do. I, I wish I could find an excuse to get on a GD train. I, I, I think there could be, uh, there's some ideas. Uh, Imagine if they did a Hogwarts Express that went cross cross country. Yeah. Okay, I could see that a lot of people would do that, right? I mean, yeah. Harry Potter's huge. But I'm going to throw you another idea. How about like for airplane travel, catering to a particular audience? And I'm talking about an airplane flight that ran for over a decade. Look up the Chicago Executive. Mm. Chicago executive was while it, I look this up. Do you guys want to guess what it might? Be? Yeah, uh, was it particularly fast or was it? No, you know what? I'll bet it was particularly slow and opulent. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was steaks, steaks and bourbon. Well, and okay. It had cigar, pipe smoking was yeah. permitted. Steak dinner was actually a feature. Relaxing atmosphere yeah. and pressurized DC six mainliners and ten other DC six stops. There was one other feature about it. It was called a club in the sky, by the way, by United Airlines, their club in the sky. What care what, to guess what the other feature was? What year was this? This was from the like 19, all the way to like 1970, I think. Okay. Yeah. So you're already smoking in the air. Probably, probably not weed. Um no. gambling? Did they gamble? They gambled. No, they didn't gamble. No, I think this is like like Playboy Club like stuff. There were there were ladies. Well, no, wrong. Uh, oh it my goodness! Called... Oh, I see it. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> gentlemen, I'd like to show you the advertisement for the United Airlines, the Chicago executive. Uh, and if you if if half of our audience hadn't heard of it, it's for men only, which might be why. <laughs> You couldn't get it. The 8 okay. p.m. club was, in the sky, nonstop to Chicago for men only. Was was it a brothel in the sky? No, no, no. It was just it was just flying chauvinism. Just for the it guys. Was just you know, and, yeah. and and that that's a thing to keep in mind. 1970. That's within our parents' lifetimes, you know, and some of our friends' lifetimes. That is a period of time that's still real where it was perfectly okay to say, "Yeah, this airplane flight." Sorry, ladies, it's for men only. Which, wow. when you think about, like, ah, you know, we've we've come a long way. It's, well, it's pretty recent, you know. Segregated drinking fountains at ten years earlier, like, like uh, that sting lasts. That that I guess this is okay attitude. So yeah, for, for seven, men only, seventeen years. Sorry, uh, a uh, 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 cis white male here, um. Who books a flight like like I don't want those girls anywhere near me? Uh, okay, I think I think the idea is the staff is probably women, especially in that era. Uh, this is for men only is code for no wives. Right. Uh, I've got some info here, Andrew. Have you have you got points here that you want to hit? I found something interesting. What do I have points from flying on the airline? What are you trying to accuse me of, Bryce? What? <laughs> Apparently, uh, <you're... laughs> I I would say, listen, it wasn't within recent history. The temperance movement did ban alcohol, so there was this attitude of like, listen, if our wives show yeah. up, the fun is gone. They had uh, a last minute massage service. 
<laughs> Last minute. Uh, making a call on behalf of the passenger back to the office. Pressure. Um, oh, oh, message. Like okay, message service, not massage message service. service. Okay. Message service. Message <laughs> service. Okay. okay. There were people <laughs> calling on. right was, now, was, Bryce, was, to was try to book bit, a flight. Was that a genuine mistake? It makes the teletype part of the sentence make a lot more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was also co-branded with the Wall Street Journal at one point. Um, wow. Uh, is this, I mean... Like they is this is this they like show a, it? Yeah, I mean they have ads like a club in the sky for men only, and they see some dudes like sitting there playing cards, drinking beers, and smiling as the as the woman comes and brings them their coffee. That's and like, they market it like a uh, uh, like a commute. You know, we leave at five p.m. and you get to Chicago at eight. You know, eight thirty. Um, they certainly make it seem like you could. Uh, so uh, I if, if, if I'm reading between the lines, uh, this seems to me, if I was somebody uh, unhappy with my home life, this would be a plausibly deniable place to engage in conspiracies to cheat on my family. <laughs> and I don't to, think it's make... that. I really, I really don't think that it's that. I think that, I think that, it's you, the photos sell you on the idea. You just, you, it's, if you're, if you have to fly back and forth between these cities and it's primarily men having to do this anyways, let's sell them on the idea that we're going to make this a fun bar. This is going to be a men's hangout. Yeah. It's going to be a guys men's club. So uh, I guess the hidden benefit is friends. Uh, would you like friends? Uh, here's a club. Well, no, 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 no. What, what, what they want is business expenditures, right? So yes. you and the team, you and the sales team, you got to go from Chicago to New York for a meeting on Friday morning. Okay, well, let's make sure that our meeting wraps up by, you know, it's a 10 o'clock meeting. Five. Let's wrap it up by 3. We got to be at the airport by 5. And then that flight back, the commute back, is from 5 to 8. And let's say, theoretically, that the stewardesses, that's their last flight of the day. And maybe, you know, hey, let's all go from here to another bar. Who knows, right? Like, 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 whether or not that's an element of it. But I do think that it was gilded toward the idea of, hey, the company's paying anyway. They got to get us from here to there. Let's let's do that. It was for Chicago industry that was going to New York, probably for advertising. Yeah, I mean, there, I can definitely see how you could pitch this as like, hey, this is my travel and like food expense because there's a meal on here. Yeah. There's a cigar on here. Has the I, word executive in it. Right. Uh, I could totally see it. I could see it both ways as like this could be a perk for the salesman who we have to send to Chicago once a month. Um, and maybe he can wet his beak a little bit at the same time. Wait, wait, wait where, where did it end? Did it end in New York or end in Chicago? Uh, it, it was back and forth. You could you like, you, if, for example, here you would get a you would get a return flight um, back to New York. So you could go New York. Oh, to okay. Chicago. So you were going. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious as where, who they were who they were marketing it to, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, 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 that that's the idea. Is it's and and I think what happened to air travel is it got commoditized and and it got cheap enough that people uh, from uh, you know all classes could could uh, interact with it, and so that was where the money was. But who knows? I mean, I, I still think that there's a possibility that we could see specialized flights like this. There's no reason why it it, it does not. Uh, uh, that it, it has fallen out of favor. I think it's just the economic incentive. No reason. Uh, well, yeah, no reason I, I, I was about to say, like, like if we are going to, th there, there is one elephant well, in the room, and that's the this theme. The this four theme. men only. <laughs> Why we replace four men only with for the masculine? Would would you say that? I mean, I, I could still see probably not cigar smoke and steaks, right? But I could definitely see. Well, I guess now the idea of like personal and work is frowned upon in a way that it was not then. Like the the, the idea of you came and you worked at a company and you were there and this was kind of your work family and these were your work brothers. That was more of a thing then. Now we we preach more of a work life. Well, and, and and now we sort of are deconstructing it, watching you know Severance on Apple TV Plus. You know, the the idea of a of a work and and home life being totally separate things. Yeah, I mean, and and also the idea of, 
ex- company expenditures being on stuff that is fun is its own battle in a way that it probably wasn't then. Uh, from the chat, what about Femboy Delta? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Got yeah. Mask United. I'll tell you what, they, they, they love to fly. And it shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just uh, take a pass on that. I do have one more story that's uh, oh. kind of uh, not amusing, but oh, yeah, that happened. Oh. You hear about the bomb that went off in Yarmouth, England? England. A bomb? Yarmouth, England. No. A, a bomb was found and exploded on was a week ago Avatar on Friday. <laughs> no, that's not a bomb, Brian. That's oh, okay. money. It's a blockbuster. Critical success. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Bomb was uh, discovered and no, big, destroyed. Uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, pretty big deal, finding a bomb and exploding it. Um, uh, uh, pretty Some notable bombs over history. Um, uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, the Moab... The mother of all bombs. The, uh, uh, well, they know. Bombs? <laughs> they know who made the bomb. By the way, who made the bomb? Was it James Cameron? No, no, Brian. Not in his life, says. man. Not a miss. single one. I want to, you don't miss uh, a best. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But uh, true lies. So uh, so uh, no, true lies made money. Made big money. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Tell me about the bomb. So uh, turns out a fascist group made it. Uh oh. Oh wow. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are you saying a fascist group made a bomb that was discovered in England? Yeah. Up, uh, up. Whoops. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what, what are you saying? Why are you a, saying whoops? This is this I'm, is a guessing game. That because I, because I, I, I don't know what comes next. <laughs> no, I know. I don't want to say anything. I don't know what this means. A fascist group bomb in England. Yeah. Every joke I want to make will get me sued to death. Is it not the sued? IRA? Just cancel. <laughs> no, although there may have been a collaboration early on between them. Could it have been ISIL? Was it the Nazis? Was it the Nazis? It was the Nazis. It's a World War II bomb left over. Ah, hey. <laughs> Thank goodness it was the Nazis. (laughs) Put that quote on his tombstone. Thank God it was the Nazis. Bryce Castillo. Thank God. (laughs) Apparently they found a World War II era bomb. They find this periodically. This happens. I have a friend that like in Germany, they found like something in Berlin. There was one they found like, hey, these gifts keep on giving. Wow. Uh, now uh, I'm noticing the word un unplanned detonation. Um, that that seems that seems telling about yeah. the quality of the destruction here. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, I, I oh I believe we've got a clip here from our friends at CBS. Possibly. Thank uh, you. CBS possibly. It's my favorite version of CBS. <laughs> One day we might have the news, or maybe not. Maybe we'll watch it on someone else's website. CSI um, Neverland. <laughs> oh. Now this happens a lot, right? Like unexploded ordinances of uh, litter of uh, goo. <laughs> and they they do litter goo, <laughs> oh, goo. all <laughs> over. Look at this. That's a huge explosion. That's a big bomb, my guy. That's stuff like a 40-foot oh. plume. Who do they think they are? LAPD blowing up some <laughs> illegal fireworks? <laughs> Wow. We all saw that one too, right? I did not, but I would love to. Oh, LAPD. So they found a house that was making in a neighborhood that was making fireworks illegally. And, and so- the bomb squad shows up and they bring their bomb disposal. Like a bomb disposal basically is it's an open ended cannon where you just have a big, big iron, whatever cauldron. You put it in, just let it blow straight up. They pack in this full, and some other person who's there is like an expert, but not on the silly in the bomb squad, but is like, I think you're packing it too tight. We got this, sir. I think you're packing it too tight. We got this, sir. Flashback to a friend of the family who was uh, Walt Omanoffer back when they decided to blow up that whale on the beach and Walt did demolitions yep. in the army. is like, I think you're doing this wrong. We got this, sir. And he got paid back by whale blubber falling on his brand new car. Uh, so <laughs> this... This this instance is sad because 
Uh, spoiler alert, they packed it too much. It went off, exploded basically the bomb disposal unit, shattered houses and windows all around. And Whoa. I don't even know if the people have still been able to move back into some of their houses right now. So, so they created a literal uh, a dumpster-sized bomb. Yeah. Uh, that's wild. And, 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 Holy oh, moly, Jolie. What did I just see? I th oh, and there was a car right now. Okay. Whoa. Uh, so I thought, I thought this might not be the right one. Cause it looked like there's like a semi truck over top of it, but that's the device I'm sure too. Yeah. They, they just put a little bit too much. They basically made a giant oh pipe bomb. They blew god. up the truck. They blew oh up everything. Oh my god. There's Which a is crazy because the reason why they intervened, I'm sure for, for public safety was just in case those people that were making illegal fireworks blew up the neighborhood, so they came to town and blew up the neighborhood. Uh, boy, do I wish I was in a morally superior position <laughs> to comment upon this irresponsible act. Oh, yeah. My pick is the latest episode of The Modern <laughs> Road. Be uh, before, right. members, before members of the LAPD bomb squad... Oh. Hold on. Before members of the LAPD bomb squad destroyed part of a South LA neighborhood by exploding a stash of legal fireworks last summer, they repeatedly ignored warnings from one of their most experienced technicians that the plan was not safe, according to a new report by the LAPD's inspector general. The member who raised concerned, identified only as bomb technician C, told investigators of the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Explosives that he had flagged both the volume and weight of the fireworks to be placed in the LAPD's total, total containment vessel, or TCV, as excessive and too powerful for the vessel. So uh, uh, I, I guess the the written plan was we're going to blow it up inside of this very highly protected shell and nothing bad will go out. Yeah. But unfortunately, he, encasing he a bunch of explosives, of bad idea. He, he said his colleagues and supervisor told him he was wrong and that he should relax. And the fireworks are loaded in the vessel all at once anyway, the inspector general found. They basically told me that they had already done the calculations. They're well under the explosive, net explosive weight that the TCV could handle. Uh, they were. And later, he told a colleague. They were. <laughs> he, later, he had a call. He told a colleague, measuring out a countercharge. I have a bad feeling. This is not good. This is too big. And again, was ignored. And they, and they wow. were right. They were right. The subsequent explosion damaging 40 vehicles, 35 properties, and injuring 17 people and displacing dozens of more residents. Like they did it right next to two parked parallel parked cars. <laughs> the well, ATF they, they, found they, 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 the ATF they, found they, later they, the bomb they, squad they, they, had they, indeed look, looks like looks like somebody is going to be promoted to bomb technician A. Go ahead. <laughs> uh not you kidding? Not the way government works. Uh <laughs> the ATF later found the bomb squad indeed badly miscalculated the explosive power of the fireworks placed into the containment vessel, overloading it, just as technician C had said. Wow. So I don't know what the outcome is, but it blew up. Detective A, Detective A told investigators he had heard technician C's raised concerns once, but left it to his team to work through those concerns and thought they had been addressed before the detonation. Not our fault, Mr. Young. Who are you to judge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, who wants to count to 10 and say 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, okay, 10. And we're there. Anybody got picks? Black cat fireworks. <laughs> Roman candles. The I, got a pick. I, I do have a pick. What do you got for a pick? I'm halfway through the book, Where Is My Flying Car? by J. Stores Hall. Um, half of the book appears to be about like a legitimate pursuit to uh, why don't we have flying cars? And he, he does bring up a good problem or, or, or a good uh, framework which is right now yes we have very fast planes but it involves a three vehicle problem as he puts it which is you exit your house you get into your car you drive to the airport you go through security and all of that brouhaha you sit down you land then you have to rent a car and then go from there um and he breaks down he keeps coming back to it, and keep in mind, I'm only halfway through the book. I believe in the second half of the book, he eventually begins to 
rail on uh, various energy policies or whatever. I haven't gotten to that yet. But but the first half of, of the book seems to be dedicated exclusively to explaining how rad gyrocopters are. Uh, <laughs> basically explaining that um, uh, uh, what we tend to want is perfect VTOL, vertical takeoff or landing. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, instead, what a gyrocopter offers is a very short takeoff and pretty much a perfectly vertical landing. But... Uh, I don't want to say there's a conspiracy afoot, but uh, oh. uh, for for reasons he feels like uh, it it didn't go through. Um, I I don't know. I'm enjoying it a lot. You could tell that this is an enthusiast, somebody who really knows their stuff when it comes to aviation, somebody who is extrapolating their experience onto the wider world. Um, but but it's 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 a very interesting read that I feel like is slightly above my head. And I like it quite a bit. There's been, yeah, gyrocopters are fascinating because because the for the, the technical explanation is that they have that propeller on top, but nothing's powering it. It basically becomes a spinning wing, so it starts to move forward. That thing starts to spin more, and you get lift. And you remember in uh, the James Bond movie, um, you only live twice. They had one little Nelly, I think it was, or it was like the one he flew around in. The challenge is, as I did, a, it was reading into this, is that the ones they've been testing commercially, the experimental ones, really dangerous, really dangerous. Yeah, th although, um, uh, uh, and, and again, uh, keep in mind, I'm in the middle of reading this book, so I'm hearing somebody aggressively rail against both helicopters and airplanes. Uh, what he doesn't like about airplanes is that they require you to get so fast to get lift off that you need a, a, an airport. And then when you land, it's you know very difficult to uh, suddenly stop very quickly. On, on helicopters, he feels like, like uh, just do you even understand the amount of torque that is happening uh, in, in a helicopter, whereas his position seems to be that gyrocopters are, you could be up in the sky, and because the gyrocopter pretty much acts like a, a wing, you could suddenly lose power, and you'll just sort of drift down like a, one of those seed pods, basically. Like, that's, uh, it that's, won't be that's ideal. That's the theory. Yeah. That's the theory, but there have nonetheless been a number of accidents with gyrocopters because it's it's and and an, it's one of the things that yes in ideal weather that's maybe what you do but in in a ninety mile an hour wind you know some high winds or whatever or something or something happens the thing about helicopters and airplanes is we've got you know a hundred years of almost both of those of data and then like the torque like yeah now we build how like you've got bell helicopters that are 50 years old that are still flying because we just know what they do that we know the performance capabilities yeah the uh uh of course neither of those solve the uh three vehicle problem uh and at this point i'm i'm now doing my best to defend the book as i'm reading it so so this is not my position but as i understand the book would respond um uh, gyrocopters just haven't been given enough of a chance, seems to be the thesis. Um, uh, and then he gets into energy policy and about how everything uh, over the last 50 years has become about conservation and how that causes us to have a harder time developing a, a, a doorstep to doorstep, you know, flying car solution. Yeah, I think. I love flying stuff. I like this. I was talking to a buddy who was had some friends that moved to one of these communities where in Florida there was they've in Florida there's a community and there's several of these, like the Aero Club or whatever, where it's literally a neighborhood built around an airport and everybody has these large garages where they can take their airplane out onto the runway and fly away. Which I think is a good sign of what the rich are doing now, we'll all be doing one yeah. day. The, I got excited about gyrocopters, but then I was following, like, I remember watching, like, a YouTube channel and somebody was, you know, doing demos and stuff. And then, if I'm remembering correctly, the demo stopped because they died. <laughs> then I was like, oh, oh Jesus. Geez. Like, I mean, oh, I, I, like, I, I, I believe is... it. Like, like uh, uh, there's, uh, this book is very much written from the perspective of somebody who knows more than me and is definitely advocating for a position. However, I also still find it totally fascinating. There, there is. I did recently. I helped do a uh, a reprint of a Arthur C. Clarke book called Profiles of the Future, 
And he was super in 1960, super, super excited about hovercraft and how hovercraft are going to be the next wave of the future. They're going to be big, whatever. Arthur C. Clarke got himself a hovercraft to try in Sri Lanka, drove it across like a lake, promptly crashed it when he realized that you couldn't steer it. You know, you couldn't really steer the thing or break it and promptly crashed into like a bunch of bushes, walked away from it and never drove another vehicle again. Uh, Jesus. That was his last shot. He's like, you got one more shot, vehicles. He Because the then he saw, craft. oh, this is why people aren't eager to hop into hovercraft because it sounds cool. And then you, you watch yeah. one and you're like, yeah, you don't, you can't break on this thing. And breaking no. around other vehicles is kind of helpful. Wow. Important. Yeah, yeah, man. So I, I'm willing to give it a chance. I think that, but the, the, the VTOL thing is really is not, Oh yeah, you need a little more runway and to land and to land. You need a lot. You, you do need a bit of runway to land, and those things like the the, the ability of helicopters for inclement weather, et cetera. It's why we use them for rescues. Why we use them for a lot of a lot of the reasons we want to use a helicopter, not a plane. Gyrocopter is not going to fit, but it could be. There could be opportunity to see like building drones out of them. I think they are neat. They are really cool. If- if, if and this is now Brian's speculation mode, and keep in mind I'm not qualified to chime in on any of this, but it's not going to stop me. Um, the impression I get is that uh, most of this is framed in the kind of idyllic, li- largely rural 1920s, 30s, 40s, as all of this was being developed, when there was a lot of land and people did live very far from each other, and uh, if you know uh, somebody suddenly you know crash lands uh, here or there, it was unlikely to cause a, a, a massive disaster. But now in the increasingly urbanized 21st century, I, I'm a little bit more sympathetic to maybe maybe not gyrocopters. But, but it's, it's a fascinating uh, breakdown. And, and you end up learning a, a fair bit about uh, uh, you know, uh, aeroscience, uh, whatever that is. Aeronautics? Aeronautics. Yeah. Aeronautics. It, 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 Aeronautic it, science, it, yeah. We we will fixate on like we'll look at the plane and we'll go ah plane hasn't changed in sixty years and it's like well look at the modern modern seven hundred class plane and you'll see you'll see the winglets you'll see little things like this see a lot of stuff and you bring a mechanic even from forty years ago and say hey repair this they're going to be like what what is this engine made of what are these materials what's going on yeah I got to pick. Uh, Go. I'll keep it short, but I'm back. I'm I'm still on the Mar on the Midnight Suns train. So good. Um, it's so good, Bryce. Uh, this is okay. a gift you've brought. Uh, well, uh, you know the people at 2K made it. Um, uh, I I think this is a really good game. I've really in the thing I've enjoyed with it the past few weeks is that um I've kind of I'm I'm dug in enough where I can just kind of play it for a for a little bit and then to walk away, and um. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's kind of nice to to have a, a modern game where you can like play it for a minute and then walk away, and it'll auto save everything, so you're fine. You don't even need to worry about it. Um, but I'm enjoying it a lot. I think the tactics stuff is good. I even I I bumped the difficulty up. I had it on easy, and then it kept reminding me, "Hey, you'll get more points." Yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, I'm enjoying Midnight Sun, and I think they're doing some trial sale thing going on. But uh, highly recommended. Midnight Sun. It's uh, I. I I saw this listed as a complaint in Midnight Suns in that it has a similar dynamic to um, uh, Mass Effect, uh, what normally is considered the romantic uh, relationship tree, only it's all about becoming friends with people. But I, I sort of dig the the lack of sexuality in anything, where it's like, yeah, no, I just want to be you know cool friends with you, Tony Stark. Uh, slash uh, Captain Marvel slash uh, Wolverine eventually when I get to him. Well, I guess that that's a that's that opens up a larger conversation about superheroes and what what that genre. Horniness. Yeah, honestly. Um but I'm not yeah. hearing it. <laughs> but I, I I dig it and uh uh it keeps I keep being surprised I'm like oh there's there's a little more for me to to dig in on. I kept worrying like oh is this just going to be the same thing over but I think it's pretty good. Any other picks? Uh, my pick is the Modern Rogue. Brian, what's the latest Modern Rogue episode about? Nobody knows. It's a uh, controversy. Oh, no, wait. It's about us melting a car and having the fire department show up. Uh, 
It's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, whoops. How so, much thermite? 80 pounds of thermite. I'm sorry, did you say 18? 80 pounds you of said thermite. One, one eight? Eight, eight zero pounds. Eight, eight zero. Uh, it's, it was, uh, uh, oh, my God. Uh, th- 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 this and this is, is one you of those, posing like, for the like, selfie. Th- 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 there was part of me that thought uh we should just bury this but uh you know what uh uh we done goofed and we owned it and we spoke to the authorities and this is the authentic historical document of us owning the fact that we shouldn't have done that don't do that don't do it watch it watch us do it and don't do it correct uh uh, also lots of facts on things to do uh, that you should do and we have another video on thermite coming out uh probably by the time you hear this so if you like thermite the modern rogue channels are out oh Andrew? Excuse me, wait, let me. Yes. I raised my hand in Skype here. Um, I am curious to know when you bought 80 pounds of thermite <laughs> and an old car and you decided, and I see a, a, a blowtorch there, <laughs> what was your expectation of what would happen? Uh, funny you should ask that because that's literally how the video begins. It begins with the, uh, flashing lights of emergency services and me quoting Bonnie saying, and you thought this was a good idea? And me responding saying, well, I don't think anybody thought it was a good idea, (laughs) but, uh, 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 in our defense, our, uh, my thinking, I'll only speak for myself. My thinking at the time was, uh, we, we've done, uh, what, uh, three, four, five bits with thermite? Uh, three or four. Um, I, I've been shocked at how ineffective it's been. Um, it it's was well contained because it's making a huge iron ingot during this chemical process, so it doesn't go everywhere. Correct. Like, like we used yeah. it to cook a steak. We used it to, we tried to get into a, 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 a safe with it, but it was not very effective at that. <laughs> uh, we used it uh, hoping to melt like seven laptops, and it was not very good at that. So uh, my entire history with thermite over the last 10 years has been largely, it's not nearly as good as you would hope it would be. Uh, so in my mind, uh, putting it on the hood of a car would have largely the same results as putting it over a bunch of laptops that were on a desk, which was very much less than you would expect. However, it turns out that once thermite eats through the hood of a car roof there's <laughs> there's lots of things inside rubber hosings gaskets yeah, yeah all there's kinds lots of things. of things that can't wait to get burned up inside yeah. and yeah. and that was the lesson that i learned yeah i have seen car fires i've never seen a laptop fire brian uh, uh, uh well you will if you watch this episode of the modern Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah i i have uh I, yeah laptop car fires i see all the time at least in florida it's, for some reason no like, uh na- but, now i'm 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 just wrapped up in trying to figure out how to make things right uh there's a fire department less than a mile away from us and i'm just like i, I i'm thinking to myself who wants to learn to eat fire? Who 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 <laughs> wants a lot of public safety messages made on their Brian, behalf? Have you thought about maybe pizza and cookies? <laughs> <laughs> who wants pizza My first and cookies? impulse. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the fears that the fire department that I'm some maniac that doesn't know what I'm doing by offering to teach them how to inhale <laughs> toxic fumes and breathe fire. That'll show them that I'm a good spirited citizen. Tube splainer. Like, Tube splainer. Let, let me get a pen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could I should do a fire walk in a fire prof suit and walk in the door and shake yeah. every one of their hands. I'm definitely writing that one down. Uh <laughs> juggling fire. Uh, I could learn. <laughs> Andrew, you got a pick for us? Uh yeah, I watched this series on Amazon Prime and I dug it. It's quirky. It's sometimes a very quirky, but I really enjoyed it all the way through. And that is The English, starring Emily Blunt and her co-star in this, who I had not seen any before, any, in anything before, and he was great. I interview any of you know about this story? Mm-mm. It looks like this is a Western? Yeah, so Chosk Spencer. So basically, Emily Blunt plays a woman coming from England. She's an aristocrat, and she is going to the Wild West to get some revenge. And why she wants revenge and who she wants revenge on is revealed as this. 
And she partners up with uh, Chas Spencer, who's a Native American who was actually in the army as a scout. Sergeant Eli Whip is his character. And he's a very interesting person with some complex backstory of his own. And it's been, I enjoyed it. It's a very quirky kind of thing of just, just, just a neat sort of story to watch from a different point of view about that. So, wow. Very cool. Uh, and and, is- and the, the latest in badass Emily Blunt, like that is, that is a, a whole career for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The cool. angel of Verdun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm good in that. Look at that. It, it and I'd say what I like about it is that it it shows the complexities and the nastiness and everything across you know the whole spectrum there. How does I it, thought it was a pretty just a pretty interesting take. How does it compare to like uh the what is it the Yellowstone verse the 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 Taylor Sheridan stuff? Yellowstone verse in its own Taylor Sheridan way is trying to be more realistic. This is this is a somewhere between this and Django Unchained. Okay. 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 A little bit absurd it, it, at times. It, 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 it adventure in the Wild West. Uh, yeah. Part this this averses could feel like a vignette in the Django verse to me. Yeah. Not quite as over top, but it is. It is. It is pretty. Nice. Last week, did you guys happen to talk about Kunk on Earth? We didn't do a show last week. No. Oh. Well, that explains it. Kunk on Earth is good. Yeah. Uh, okay. It is great. Oh, maybe maybe I did pick that. Yeah, uh, that's a Netflix comedy show. Uh, yep, fantastic. What is any, it? Any thoughts about it, Brian? Or oh no no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I well if I'm gonna double tap, uh, uh, Kunk on Earth is 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 so so good. It's a friendlier version of some of the motifs that we've seen in, you know, your Sasha Baron Conan, uh, Cohen stuff, your Borat's, what have you only very clearly all of the academics are in on it and they're given one directive, which is do not break. And some of them obey it better than others. Uh, there's also a one note joke that, uh, I've enjoyed very much. Uh, and, uh, my family has been the recipient of it, uh, uh quite a bit. It's wonderful. I've watched the whole thing twice. It's great. That's very funny. Kunk on Earth. C U N K. Cool. Is that it? That. I think so. Mm. Gentlemen, it's been weird. Very cool. Alrighty, we got about uh, 45 left. Uh, uh, I, mean, I have to tap out, unfortunately, boys, because I have to attend some wedding stuff. But oh, yeah. uh, have a good a wedding. Cheers. Uh, a cheers. To, I a cheers can to hang, all. but I'm going to run to the restroom. Okay. We'll take a short break. Uh, Andrew, you, you good? Nah, whatever. I'm good. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, then, uh... we'll take a short break here and come back for some after things. How's your weekend, Andrew? Or, what, no, how's your, do you have any plans for the weekend? Uh, we're, we're plans for the weekend now. Um, it's been a pretty busy week for me, so I would like to chill. I've actually got, had somebody taking down a vine that worked its way up on our, to our balcony, and they just took that out right now. I've got somebody else taking, another two group contractors taking out cabinets, and that's going to be the workout room. Ooh. There's a lot of that. I think somebody's going to come in and paint, so a lot of just getting contractors doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Contract and- because you're you're still in that place of like uh, settling in, right? You're kind of making it your own. Oh, Bryce, like my closet, like in work, I think they think that like you know my wife threw me out. I'm living on hard times because I keep wearing like the same three shirts because I haven't unpacked my the rest of my clothes. Yeah. You know, she's all packed. She's settled in. I just is it just no. busy with deadlines and stuff? Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I uh, back. I'm at, just a procrastinator. Mm-mm. And uh, at my uh, previous job, which was like an office government sort of thing, I only had, gosh, I want to say maybe four or five polos. I I was always wearing pretty much the same thing every week because um, I didn't want to have. And I was and I was just getting started and all, but uh, yeah, I just wear a lot of the same stuff. But it's comfortable. I didn't have to wear like a. Uh, a full button down or anything like that. So that's good. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I you know, when I work at an office, which has got a mixture of really well-dressed like salespeople to researchers who just don't need to think about like, uh, you know, what the latest fashion is, it's a very interesting thing, you know, as far as that. So you can get away with a lot, but I don't want to sort of fall into, I need to need to pay more attention to what I'm doing. So yeah. you have kind of excuses, you know, not be in the office that much, but. Yeah, set a, set a good example for the team. Yeah, so if you have a little chat GPT talk, have you been using chat GPT? Uh, not, uh, not lately. I haven't had a, a use for it, but I keep, I keep thinking of, 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 or I keep trying to think of different ways I, I could use chat GPT mm -hmm. for, for various things. Uh, what about you? Have you done anything novel with it lately? Yeah, because like it's really, I don't really do any for books, but um, it's just code writing. Like I do yeah. a lot of code writing. Yeah, and I really so would like to try it. It's really the code helpful. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and like even ChatGPT, because like right now, like I want to play with something with kaboom.js, the game it dev, and I'm like, oh, I want all the text files from that, you know, the GitHub. I'm like, well, I guess ask ChatGPT to like, hey, uh, how do I extract all the text files from this? Then it'll write me a piece of code and I run it, and then I got all the text files. Oh, yeah, that's clever. Make, make it do the hard work. Yeah, I try to do that all the time. <laughs> uh, oh, what are here? Uh, boop, boop, boodly boop. There we go. Oh, hello. Yeah. We done it. We're doing it. Uh, it's happening. Uh, Andrew, did you need a break? You good? Nah, I'm good. You good? Okay. Well, uh, then I'll catch in for some after things. How about that? Sounds uh, good. Let's kick it off in. Three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, hello. Bryce Castillo. That's me. And who are you? And that's all that matters. That's, that's right. all that matters. Oh, just the three of us. Just, 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 just Brian Brushwood, Bryce Castillo, and just our mysterious narrator. Us. Yes. I would like to talk a bit about adaptation, adaptation, adapting. Ooh, okay. This is uh, good. There are a lot of ways you can start. Yeah. Do you mean like uh, taking a story? Do you mean... Uh, Do you mean like moving running? to the other part of California, way up north? <laughs> it's not a personal thing, bragging <laughs> about me. What are you trying to say? Well, uh, no, no, no. But, but uh, in, in, in all yeah. sincerity, uh, you and I have spoken off the record that mm. I'll bring into this now. Um, w when you're a creative independent you, uh, I, I mentioned this casually and I was really pleased Andrew that you instantly knew you instantly grokked what I was trying to express uh, you oftentimes don't think of your wealth in terms of dollars that you have but instead of months that you're taking care of and and you know I've got mm -hmm. shows for this amount of time and then I'm going to do this gig and then this will be what I focused on, focused on and I expressed to you that uh, I, I know for the next few months, everything is about promoting World's Greatest Con. But after that, things get a little bit fuzzy to me. Um, and I suppose that's that was me expressing the uh, uh, intuition of adaptation. I'm going to cough now because that's why I've been talking weird. I... Yeah, I think about that there's a lot of stuff going on with AI. We're seeing this sort of a, a, a bunch of new tools and whatnot and conversations I have both outside, just like I have one of the writing groups that uh, one of the writing orgs I'm a member of is like as doing a survey on AI and want to know how it's impacting people because we, we've always imagined there will be a future where there will be AI and AI will be pervasive and everywhere. But the rate at which that happens, you know, the, 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 the future happens unevenly. It happens in not the ways we expect. Previously, you talked about the book, you know, Where's My Flying Car? And, and it's an example of how we had an idea of what the future meant 50 years ago. And then that the reality was very different. We go down these different paths of the idea. If you look at, you look at I don't think 50 years ago, a device as complex as an iPhone, most people thought we would have. When you think about really, you'd be like, oh, just a phone. But like, yeah, it's a 4K camera. It's a studio. It's all these things. It's it is you can and, 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 you can run an entire business from this. It's it's and it's good enough at all of those things. And I think that uh, most science fiction thinks to the 
kind of the end game of AI, of, of AGI, uh, uh, but mm -hmm. mm, we don't see a lot about the good enough part. Um, what happens mm -hmm. when anybody can be a war photographer on uh, the front lines of, of an invasion in, in, into the Ukraine and so on? Um, uh, what, uh, what, what's, uh, what's the one symbol of a modern worker, of a modern information age worker? I mean, having a smartphone for sure. Or a laptop. I mean, I mean, even that, I, I'm astonished. So, so this laptop that that I have in front of me mm -hmm. here here at the studio, Got him on the surface. Uh, I am I'm shocked at how many times I've gone on business trips and thought, eh, do I need it? No. Oh, you, yeah. you can you can yeah you can get away with a lot of your phone. I do a lot, but I'm still saying that lap. That's like when you go to work for a company now. Here's Remote. your laptop. Yeah. This, right. is, this is what your thing is. It's not because it's the filing cabinet, it's the printer, it's the phone, sort of, it's all these things. And now the phone subsumes more of that. And, and, and it's, it is a thing because you think, and you try to think about like, we, the form factors changed a little bit, gotten thinner. And I remember the first laptop I bought like 1992 or 93 or something and paid probably $900 for it, which in those dollars was a lot compared to what you get today. Uh, substantially so. Yes, mm -hmm. and you heard, heard of Moore's Law. Please tell me more. Uh -huh. But uh, what that did, you know, how much that subsumed through online applications and stuff like you can run a company, you can run a company from your phone, but you just, just that idea of where uh, that became. Well, in, uh, since we're in uh, after things, I can talk a little bit out of school. Like it's now becoming baked into the way we run scam stuff, the online store that, um, uh, you know, Austin is very expensive to live downtown and so on. Uh, and, and we're transitioning to a place where more things happen on campus as far as the physical fulfillment of the nuts and bolts. But meanwhile, David Rowan is intent, you know, he, he's cracked the code of like, oh, wait, no, 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 I can, I can take less money and just travel a lot like like he's going to be one of those techno digital mm -hmm. nomads that we hear about and uh and run the store and i honestly don't think i don't think customer service will i think nothing will suffer for it i think he's going to be great at it and it'll just he'll live a lifestyle that costs less money because he has that that magic access to everything mm. I, yeah it's it's oh sorry Bryce. go ahead well, I, I, thinking about adaptability, um, I was I was thinking today about YouTube and Shorts. Um, it's become you know we've talked about it a lot, and it's it's becoming you know its own sort of uh, outlet, and, and 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 it's it's interesting because it is a new paradigm for how you experience YouTube. Um, it's not new, you know, across the world, right? TikTok has it, Reels. Um, it's it is not dissimilar to Stories. Um, but I think what is interesting about YouTube and certainly as a creator on the creator side, um, it's kind of, it's kind of really futuristic to go from like, Hey, this is the biggest video platform on the world. Now we're going to make a new, we're going to take a new per paradigm and give you a new way to experience all of this while, still having access to all of the previous content linked to that content, all of the stuff that is built on top of like, I guess that's the interesting thing about shorts to me. Um, I was talking with someone else the other day and they said, Oh, I hate shorts. And I get it. Like, I get it. Like it's kind of really clumsily put together right now. Um, but at the same time, it, you, it, it's very much like the Instagram adding stories moment for YouTube. It feels like, of we're, we're going to steal this, but our benefit is that we already have billions of hours of content to connect it to. And we well, already have all of the, the most users out of anybody. And, and I'll not fault anybody who wants to complain about shorts mucking up their feet or whatever. Uh, but the they response should be is in the right places for sure is, is, is very, very simple. It's like, sounds like it's not for you, but, but by the numbers it's for a lot of new people who are discovering, like, uh, uh, we'll talk some real numbers here for a bit, like uh, uh, doing long form content week after week after week, we did regularity, we had consist consistency of product and so on. Um, and things begin to plateau, mm -hmm. but 
but with shorts, the fact that it's being algorithmically fed to people who are very likely to like your back catalog of product, it's been astonishing. Uh, Andrew, like, like, like uh, we had kind of leveled off to less than a thousand new subscribers a month on the Modern Rogue, but now suddenly we're 6,000 new subscribers a month. And when they subscribe, they're subscribing both to the long form and the short form content. Right. And all of a sudden there's a reliability, uh, which well, is, there's a reliability of reach that TikTok is not able to offer that YouTube does appear to be able to offer. I am skeptical only because TikTok seemed to be the exact same way. And then, and then they changed. in the past six, six weeks or so, it definitely seems like and they've you, turned uh, the faucet down. You're right. Oh, yeah. Take everything I just said with the caveat. Huge of grain of salt. All, all of the rules can change at any moment. Yeah. I, I think that there is going to be a interesting it's going to be interesting to see where youtube goes versus you tiktok as far as that like the shorts like i begrudgingly watch more shorts and some of them are fine some just felt like hey you just pulled 30 seconds out of this other video that i had already watched uh but then some of them like oh this is cool this is fine engaging but i think that the long-term play is tiktok like pays like nothing to its creators correct like, tiktok is like very much algorithm and as as I as I phrased it uh, previously, there's only one star of TikTok, and that's TikTok. Uh, everybody else gets one moment in the spotlight, and then we move on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that. So yeah, I think that that's going to be very curious to see is what they do because do they feel that there's so many people coming in to create content for them? Do they need superstars? Right. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just they just have an algorithm just to selects and makes people, and then by the time they run their course, find somebody else. Mm. TikTok is not your friend. Well, yeah, I, and I mean, there's always the undercurrent of like you have to have good, you have to have something people will respond to, right? I mean, if you just have junk, I mean, there are novel cases where something bad becomes popular partly because it's bad, but you do have to have generally a certain amount of actual social engagement for like you can we I use like you see in the music industry the idea of like astroturfed artists you know fake popular artists to try to get them get get them off the ground um but there's only a limit there's a there's a limit to that there's a limit to how much someone will want to ask to listen to something they don't want to listen to to ask to watch something they don't want to watch you know like i i, I always i do think about that also when we talk about algorithms I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring this up again because I was very fascinated by the Nothing Forever, which we talked about previously, mm -hmm. which uh, was the AI-generated Seinfeld parody that was 24-7 nonstop until uh, they uh, <laughs> changed up the way it was being generated and they <laughs> just, just created some content that was not appropriate for Twitch. Yeah. And then it got banned for like 14 days. Yeah, they'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, uh, but that that idea of like, I was going to say on one side is you have this short form content, you have it's easy for people to produce and you can produce a ton of it, have billions of clips. The other side of it is this sort of world of letting a narrative, or even narrative is the right word, just keep playing out nonstop. And that's what I'm curious too, is like, where's the world of generative content going to be like? Yeah. There, there will be AI generated versions of, reels and stories and TikTok and all that, but there's still going to be, we're going to watch people doing cringy things because making fun of a cringy thing a robot did isn't as fun as making fun of a cringy thing a human did. And we've already got so, so many, um, we, we put a lot of uh, time, effort, love, and care into, into our media, into what we put out. Uh, into into our speaking. evergreen content that um, we create. But there are definitely channels out there that really pump and dump a little bit, you know, uh, some of the most popular, partly because they make so much, so much, uh, quick, maybe disposable material, um, that I can't imagine, I don't know, all of the worries about generative c content, like there's already enough junk out there. They'll just make it faster, but it'll still be junk. <laughs> junk will be junk and good stuff will be good stuff. And I, there, there's only so much you can tell people that, uh, this thing rules, even if it stinks. Well, there's, there's, but we live in, I, I have 
There's no shortage of really good things for me to watch on streaming and other places. Like we live in this golden age of this because there's so much competition for it. And, and I could see that there was a period with cable, when cable was sort of king, that wasn't as much the case. The, th the good stuff was the things you had to pay for HBO and all that. The rest of it was filler content. And we don't, we, we have a lot more, or the, the, the number of hits we're exposed to is super high comparatively because it, where it was just a cable plan, you paid for it and, you know, crappy cable station was going to get their dollar eighty a month, whatever, from the package. That's changed, and I think that in that world of everybody creating content is going to be our the opportunity to create a ton. It's yeah, I think you're still the really good stuff is still going to be there. Uh, th this is one of those moments where I want to loop back to uh, one of Justin Robert Young's maxims that is so so true. Is that February, is, uh, October uh, issue. The the internet smells effort, and specifically mm. what the internet hungers for is human effort and even more specifically the internet hungers for human effort to satisfy an empty void that they as a consumer want um you know there's you and they and as we've talked about before you know i perceive the fundamental attribution error that most creators make is they look inside themselves in terms of what do i have and they think that's the majority of the story uh, no. Uh, instead, you should spend more of your time looking at they and what is the unmet need that they're desperately hoping to hear and figure out what is within you to uh, satisfy that. There there was working in reality TV and the aughts and being perfectly connected to it. I remember I would sometimes see casting tapes and stuff from people. And, and there was somebody who, for a show, it stuck with me because it became a running joke. And this young woman who was doing some pilot or something like this. And she says, I'm tired of not being famous. And, and, and that became kind of my catchphrase is like, anytime oh I hear God. no, like I'm tired of not being famous. Cause in her head, that's that expectation of what she belongs to be a famous right. yeah. says, says uh, one of two people here who have worked very hard to get over the fact that we're tired of not being famous price uh but yeah so no, yeah. so so i i part of me goes i know what she's saying i would never say it out loud because i know that doesn't come from a healthy place and i think that that's that is a thing you see so some some content some of the best people who make some of this content like there's a little bit of like yeah i want to get known for it but it's like i want to make a cool thing i want to make a cool thing not what cringy whatever thing i can do to get attention because people think that like ah once i have that attention and we've seen a lot of examples of people who had really bad attention like kim you know like the starting point of kim kardashian's career not the most ideal how she sure. turned it out fantastic and some people are like oh well that doesn't it doesn't matter how you get in the door and it's like well that trajectory gets set early on and if you're super smart and connected like she is you're going to probably do okay right so like, there's, uh, there, those are they're long stories of strife to get from point a to point b in there like uh, the other day I, I i think i shared this in one of our group chats uh uh, you know who's out there doing concerts and like rocking the entire crowd? One Rebecca Black, like she's still like doing music and has got this new wave. And you think about like, oh, she was the most hated person in the world because she had a catchy kind of annoying song. Like, yeah, that was such, and that was people, an example of like, yeah, us at our worst because teenager hires one of these like we'll make you a song companies to make a song makes a you know cringy sort of song I, I, it's a kid i, 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 I believe it was for a bat mitzvah right I'm yeah sort of present yeah, yeah yeah she's a kid she makes a song and some of it was just so mean-spirited just so this that like what was her sin that she wanted to record a song and that, that, that yeah, that she became this sort of like the subject. Of, I think it's, yeah, it's funny. That's sort of like, yeah, it's sort of a funny thing, but sometimes be like, yeah, just look at her like, no, like it's like the movie, the room, you know, mm -hmm. when you watch, you know, like the thing about, or, uh, and, and it's, it's companion movie, the disaster artist. Yeah. Well, but like the hate watching element, like the yeah. drinking game, you do the drinking game for the room and that's not exactly respectful of the material. And, and that's a thing where, I think that uh, Tony, Tommy Wiseau, I think that some people see this and they actually get it and you go, I really respect him. You know, I mean, there may be some crazy answers, but you go like, he made a movie. He saw it through. 
He put everything into it. And a lot of people on the sidelines who never complete anything like, oh, it's crap. It's like, yes, yes, that is. And you know, it's really hard to wake up every day on something that's crappy and keep going at it. That's, right. that's really, really hard. And, and that's, I think that's sort of less of like, Hey, yeah. Re- Rebecca Black, like, Hey, listen, you know, there was enough people now that were like, Hey, yeah, you know what? I identify with you. I see that like to hell with the haters. They don't get it. You know, they're so looking for somebody to put down on. So, yeah, you know, I'm glad there is that place for that. And I'm glad a lot of people like Tommy Wiseau, people like, I actually love the guy and like Brad to hear Cause like, it's part of it because he's famous because of this, but also because a lot of people go like, dude made it happen. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about him. We're not talking about yeah. me. We're talking about him. Yeah. No, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I am certain I brought this up years ago, but uh, uh, Jason Pargin on Cracked brings up, a, and I can't find the exact quote, so I'll, I'll paraphrase, but uh, six harsh, harsh truths that will make you a better person. Uh, one of the things he brings up is, when you really distill every negative comment to anything on, he mentions cracked, but it, it's just as true for YouTube or you name it. It boils down to uh, this person didn't make the thing the way I would have made it. And the attention they're getting is making me uncomfortable. And, and that's uh, to some extent what we all experienced uh, watching the internet react to Rebecca black and so on. It's definitely a symptom of a, uh, a very heavy user generated culture. You know, we've gotten to a place where we've asked everyone to chit to, to chime in on everything, to have a, have a, have a take, have a response, make content about it, to make that their brand. And, and yeah, that's, that kind of stinks. That does kind of stink. And, um, I don't know. You have, that's, that's part of adapting. I w- I wonder if, uh, and I, I can't speak for the, you know, humanity writ large, you know, the entire globe, but, but at least our experience of humanity, I wonder if we're going through a bit of an adolescence in terms of understanding that uh, all of us do get 15 minutes of fame and it's not as fun as any of us expected. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've automated it now, right? Like you don't need to get off the bus in Hollywood to, try and make it in the pictures you just open up the app and uh, make enough videos until you get your automatic boosts your first automatic free boosts and then you're off to the crack races i want i wonder if crack cocaine uh very addictive <laughs> the crack races oh i uh i wonder if there should be like a field manual like a uh so you had your first viral success you know sort of a a very short book that explains the do's and do nots of how to react to things. I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if there already was how to handle viral attention book or viral success or how to go viral and reach millions. The six. See, everybody wants to get there, but very few people understand how painful it is to suddenly have the spotlight of humanity shown back upon you. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, like for, for example, uh, uh, you know, we just released a, 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 a well-performing video on the, the modern rogue, which means that we have two types of responses. We have people who are saying it's good to see you're creating content again, which is slightly offensive because we've always been creating content. Literally did not stop. <laughs> uh, uh, and then the other type of response is this is so irresponsible. I hope that you get sued and have to pay money and lose everything over this. <laughs> uh, and, and, and uh, like I, I understand both of those, but, uh, uh, but hey, that's the, Hey, you know what? That's how much two cents is worth. Two cents. That was yeah. Randy, James Randy, who we know once he got a, uh, got a letter from somebody who was very angry at him and like basically said like, you know, you should may the flesh be peeled from your skin and you dipped into scalding salt. You know, may you have vultures tear apart your eyeballs. May you be endured like an eternal damnation. Da, da, da. 
yours in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Literally yours in Christ. Yeah. Yours, yours like, in Christ, JC. It's a big man. <laughs> Literally it's just, it's just a third that. testament. <laughs> but it was just that amazing thing of this person not seeing that contradiction of like, it's like, ah, everybody stop being a jerk. You know, let's be all be nice to each other. Next tweet, like, look at this a-hole. It's oh, like, man. Yeah. Daniel J. Newman in the chat has a great idea. The book should be called How to Succeed in Business Without Even Crying. <laughs> yeah, that's a great title. That's a good, that's a good that's title. That's a very good title. I think we solved the problems of the world when we it comes to adaptation. Adapt. <laughs> uh, well, and and uh, not only that. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, be uh, the way I I read it once was, uh, among all of the skills you can develop, the most valuable is to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable when when you are a, a fighter pilot and you are pulling 5g's there's nothing fun about that for you but if you can become comfortable being uncomfortable like that uh if if brian brushwood can lay on a bed of nails and have two people of uh, uh hopefully less than 300 pounds total stand on him uh and 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 get through it um then you, you i mean life is life is what you accept life is what you take on well, to, and, to some and degree is, it, is yeah uh so, so somebody recently said uh that uh, distilled down to a simple phrase amazon figured out that they could take on a maximum amount of friction between the customer and the product and that's why amazon is amazon you know and uh Likewise, uh, my guess is it was not fun for Amazon to have to develop a competitor to UPS and so on. My guess is that it was not joyful every single holiday season for them to scramble to uh, get everybody's order in time or not, or you know, eat the garbage when uh, of admitting, sorry, it didn't make it there on time. But to the extent that you're comfortable taking on responsibility, uh, uh, that kind of defines success. Yeah. It's doing nailed the hard it. things sometimes. Got it. You're yeah. welcome. You nailed it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bezos. Bezos Brushwood. Any picks? Any picks? Uh, I'm I'm watching Poker Face. It's all right. I'm watching Poker Face. It's all how, right. How far in are you? I think I finished the third episode today. Uh, okay. Uh, it's first right. first episode I thought was quite good. I did ne not like the first episode. Really? I really did not like it. Even though it had Adrian Brody in it. Yeah, I mean, he was fine. He's He was a good part of it. Yeah. Okay. I think my, I'll like, go watch Poker Face. I think it's pretty good. I think it's shot kind of bad. I think it doesn't look very good, but I'm going to watch more of it. I, I don't debate that. And it is very, very simple. It's like, it's almost as though I, I he set out for it to be. Mm, too I have, simple. I have more thoughts about that, but that's going to be an emerging thought. Okay. All right. Any other any other picks? Um, Kunk on Earth again. It's great. Just okay. everybody watch it. I've 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 been playing Mario Odyssey. Oh, do you, are you um, it's so great, isn't it? Yeah, I bought it years ago. I had a Switch, and then finally I was set it up and putting together like a workout room, and I put the Switch there because of the ring fit. And then I'm like, man, you you know, you guys are better at this than I am. But sometimes it's really good to spend five minutes with your brain, not typing a keyboard, not clicking a mouse, but just like jumping through hoops and stuff. Yep. So uh, that's basically why I got it. Decided I got a Nintendo a Switch Lite so I could just. It's. It's, Relax. it's a as 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 Mario games go, I think it is one of the best ones, one of the best games of all time. Th. Holy moly! Uh, really? Yeah, I think it is a major blast. If you like 3D platforming at all, they've got it's it's really well designed. The way it's set up with how you get moons and progress through the game is really smart and generous. It's great. It's just it's really great. Yeah, I like it because. I don't play many games and 
So I'm kind of stupid when it comes to play a game and something that's very easy for somebody will be very challenging for me. And having um, the little mode where it gives you the little hints to go this way or what, I'm like, man, it really, there's so many more levels to this game. Yeah. It is very helpful to me. It, it's fun. It is like living in a cartoon. It really is just just kind of, and this is a game like, was it 10 years old now? Uh, about? About five years old. I mean, it was near, it was almost a launch title for the Switch. So I would say three or four, okay. four or five years now. Three, three, four, five. Uh, I, uh. Yeah, it came out in, yeah, 2017. So yeah, five years, three, six years. Yeah. Wow. So cool. That's my pick. I'm, I'm going to write down how to succeed without even crying. That's so good. <laughs> it's such a good title. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been after. That's how you go after. Good stuff, everybody. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. We will be uh, uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be live in a couple more hours. There, I've got more marbles action for you tonight. Uh, we've got cord killers back on Monday, uh, and I think we might have a new another modern rug video coming out here in a little bit later today. So keep an eye on for that. Oh yeah. And yes, there will be more thermite in it. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Lean in. <laughs> That's right. All right, everyone. Have a good rest of your Friday. Bye. Good job, team. Bye.